Hello and welcome to all you Sagittarians. This is again, again, yearly horoscope, full Sagittarius. Now, the difference is that I'm going to look a little bit more in detail to your degree, the, the amount of degree that your sun sign or a moon sign or ascendant sign is in Sagittarius. Okay, so this is a, um, applicable for the sun in Sagittarius, a moon in Sagittarius, an ascendant in Sagittarius, but I'm going to look at the degrees. And let's start with the good news. Let's start with Jupiter in your opposite sign, right? And that is uh, on the 25th of May. You're going to have the planet Jupiter is you, right? So you're going to be uh, in the beginning of the year between January and May. You're going to have Jupiter and Uranus in your sixth house of your work. So you definitely are going to keep on exploring, keep on expanding, and keep on renewing what you want to renew in your, your lifestyle, right? It's like a lot of, I see a lot of Sagittarians leveling up. And why is that? Because Jupiter is in the house of the lifestyle, you know, how you run your day-to-day -day life. It's the sixth house. It's how you wake up in the morning and what you do every single day to keep it running and to be in, in your best interest for the long run. The, the, these are called good habits, good routines to empower you, to strengthen you. And they are in Taurus, so with real good habits when it comes to food, when it comes to exercises and so on. So that is the emphasis in the first part of the year. And opportunities to grow, opportunities to grow when it comes to your work, for sure. So that's a bit more the focus there. But then when Jupiter comes into your seventh house, you are in the seventh house, which means relationships. Whether you're single or not, you have an opportunity every 12 years of expansion in your connections. And I'm meaning here business partnerships, clients, when you are single, a romantic partner. When you are not single, it could be some sort of a mentor or mentors appearing into your life significant people into your life, right? Other than friends or just friends or family. No, it's that specific person. And where is Jupiter going to, who's going to feel that the most? Well, a lot of you Sagittarians, because Jupiter is a planet that will go from zero degrees up until 21 degrees. So if you've got planets between zero and 21 degrees of Sagittarius, you're already going to feel it this year. So the early one, the, the, boor, the ones who are born with zero, one, two, three degrees of uh, Sagittarius going to feel it already in May, June, July, and so on. So, but like two thirds of the Sagittarians are going to feel this. Um, for those of you who were born a bit later, are going to feel it next year. Well, I mean, 2025. So there is expansion for you. There is new people coming to the horizon that are Jupiterian. They are coming into your life. So for the single people of you, is this a good sign? Absolutely. You're going to attract a Jupiterian kind of person. Wow. That means positive. That means buoyant. It's in Gemini. So talkative, communicative, smart, understanding a bit of everything, but not a specialist, though, in something. But that's okay. Um, it can mean someone from abroad from a different culture or a different background, but they will give you opportunity. Whether it is for work or whatever it is, they are going to give you some sort of an opportunity. That's why I'm saying like mentors and so on uh, could be really the case. If you are in an existing relationship, this could mean like a new business partner. This could mean like, yes, you bump into people and they... They help you to grow. They help you to expand your vision, your life, your work, your destiny. So it's a very positive transit. And with, it's your ruler. So it also shows that you are very uh, occupied by or interested in others. And you, you should be, right? I don't like to say should, but it's a good thing. It's a good thing because you, you can expand together. I would rather say... Um, you know, work with other people, connect with other people. You're going to grow two times um, harder, bigger, and so on. So really, really good energy for you, for sure. 
Pluto is shifting into your third house. The beginning of the year, it's going to be in Aquarius for most of the year. And is that a good thing? Is that a bad thing? What is that all about? Now, first of all, Pluto is Pluto. The Pluto is always a difficult thing. It's always a challenging thing, especially if you are not aware. Pluto is like more like fearful and you're going to do more the toxic way of Pluto, which is like, Ugh, I'm not going to surrender here. I'm just going to resist it. And then it becomes control freak and all of that. In a good way, it is empowerment. So your power is in the third house, which is your speech, your communication. You can strengthen that like no other. I mean, if you are in a profession that has to deal with, with communication and Pluto is transiting there, it's going to be very helpful for you. And why? In particular, because it's sextiling your energy. So Pluto is in Aquarius. That is a sextile to your energy. That means that this is not going to be so unsettling because Pluto, when it comes into a house, when it comes into a sign, and in a particular area of your life, it tends to destroy everything in order for it to rebuild from scratch. Now, when it's sextiling your energy, it means that it's not going to be so unsettling. So, yes, it can destroy parts of your the way that you think. But you know as a Sagittarian that every now and then changing your mindset is a good thing. And especially when it, would, when it was a mindset that was toxic in the past. So you definitely have that opportunity here to be stronger when it comes to your mind, when it comes to your day-to-day -day way that you think. It can also be people because the third house represents uh, siblings and it represents neighbors. So people in the neighborhood, there could be so, some platonic issues coming up there. But again, it's sextiling your energy. So I would not worry too much about it. If you're doing the beautiful, good not beautiful, but good way of Pluto, which is keeping everything aboard, above board, not trying to manipulate and um, not playing the game, mind games, not playing those games with other people, those dramas. You know, watch that video that I made a long time ago, if you're interested, uh, about the Karpman um, triangle, which is all about power and the power struggle and that we fall for, the drama that we fall for, the drama, the drama triangle from uh, Karpman. So don't fall for the drama, the mind games of other people, and don't play mind games with other people either. You know, it's going to turn back. And so, but do it in the positive way. Like, yes, I have a message. And I'm going for it. It's going to be very powerful, but only for the people who want to hear me. You know, I'm not going to, um, you know, force these things to people. And when it comes to my speech, that's very powerful. Situations or uh, connections with siblings and, and um, uh, neighbors can change. Literally, I'm a Sagittarius rising. And when Pluto went into Aquarius, uh, there were like... I think two or three, no more, because it's apartments. A lot of people in my street, you know, neighbors, you could say, they sold their houses. They went away. So I'm going to have all new people here, probably very platonic people. But again, you can do it. You can take it into your advantage because of that sex time. Very interesting. Neptune stays in your fourth house. Again, these are transits. The Neptunian transit is going to go in 2024 from 25 degrees up until 29 degrees of Pisces. So it's only most of you Sagittarians already have experienced this Neptunian energy. But some of you, and I'm going to focus now on those people, or maybe, you know, it's interesting to hear it again what it was there for, for people who already experienced it. That, so if you've got planets between 25 degrees of uh, Sagittarius, 26, 27, 28, 29, you're going to have Neptune in a square to your energy, to your sun, to your moon, to your ascendant. And it's in your fourth house. The fourth house represents your emotions, literally also your home, right? Your ancestry, um, your emotional setup. So for those people, this is a square. So this means tension. And this can be unsettling, 
right? Unsettling why if we resist, if we chase too much, basically, right? For a relationship, we would, for instance, fall for someone who's very Neptunian. In other words, we, we can't put our fingers on them. That's a very Neptunian kind of attraction. And we try to force that. We try to, I want to know who they are. You know, it's like with a fish, you know, if you're trying to catch it, it's got, whoop, it's flipping out of your hands again. You know, it's better just not to do it. And then the fish will swim towards you if they're supposed to swim towards you. It's about trust. It's about believing in the universe. Nothing more, nothing less. But that can be very confusing right? If it's your sun sign, for instance, that it's squaring up, it's a typical feeling of, I don't know where I belong, you know, Neptune in the fourth, or I don't know my, my profession, what's going on here? You know, I want to do this, I want to do that, I don't know it anymore. And that's a good thing. It shows parallel universes, and it's there to explore the trial and error. But the advice is always to do something more Neptunian, which is more um empathic could be more empathic or more artistic or more doing something for the collective and so on when it's your moon or your ascendant it is more with people and relationships so you could be encountering people that are very neptunian like are they in relationship or not they say they are um Split, they have split up, but he's still married or she's still married. But well, what's going on here? That's Neptunian. That's a red flag, by the way. So what should you do? Actually, it's more like what should you not do? It's jumping into it. It's chasing, right? You, it's better not to chase with the Neptunian vibes there and let it unfold because it, it can be very good to explore and to see what's going on. So for relationships, it can be a lot about, yes, I met something on the internet. You know, I always think of catfish. That's very Neptunian. You know, it's in front of your face and your friends are warning you, but you're not able to see it until the transit is over. Is that to catch you? No. It's to learn you something about why you have longed so much something that you wanted to get outside of you and actually it's inside of you so what i always advise people with this neptune it's about um exploring this neptunian energy in yourself and being creative being empathic yes but also wanting to fill up your own cup and not making someone else um accountable uh, or responsible for your happiness right? So very interesting transit for sure. Not the easiest one though. Jupiter and Uranus, I already talked about it. And yes, also Saturn. So some of you are going to feel more the Neptune vibes, you know, especially with the 25 to 29 degrees, but others are going to feel more the Saturnal energy in Pisces, which is also in your fourth house. But that is between 3 degrees and 19 degrees of uh, Pisces. So the Sagittarians who uh, have planets there, uh, between 3 to 19 degrees of Sagittarius, you're going to feel more the Saturnal energy, which is the opposite energy I just described, which is all about going inwards, yes, and test. And also... With a Saturn and a square to your sun, a square to your moon, it's about slowing down. It's about you feel there could be restrictions in relationships. In like you feel Saturn square moon is a typical thing of you feeling like I have to do everything here. You know, but the thing is not to try to change the other person, but to reflect. Is this really the case? What's going on here? And what is the goodness of you in being responsible for your own emotions? Maybe you are too much relying on others, or maybe they are relying probably too much on you. And how to change your own energy in that respect. So it's a very introspective time when Saturn squares up to your sun or your moon or your ascendant. Very introspective. It could also mean a time of hard work, 
you know, um, of uh, you feeling a little bit less energy, like that the same hard, the, the same work that you do demands just a little bit more of your energy. There could be that as well. To really be cautious with um, if your body is, sign, is doing signals of oh, uh, slow down, you do slow down, especially Saturn on the sun and on the uh, ascendant, also on the moon, actually. So it could feel a little bit more lonely there, even if you have the best relationships and so on. But it's not to trick you. It's to look inwards and what you can give to yourself instead of feeling the neediness of others. So, and that's going to give you strength and it's going to give you a happier life as well. Very busy life, uh, Sagittarians. I think it's an interesting one for sure. Make the best out of it. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye.